Hello and welcome to Front Row Centre with your host, Guy Davis. Now, uh, today of course we're going to be talking about uh, the fact that Tom Brady is an American god, that uh, Bill Belichick is a natural leader on par with General Patton, and that the uh, New England Patriots are, I don't know, probably on par with the Spartan Army. Of course we're not going to talk about that. I know absolutely nothing about American football, but what I do know is that the Super Bowl attracts millions of eyes, billions of eyes maybe, around the world, and that uh, large corporations, including television networks and movie studios, want to get some of those eyes on their upcoming products. So that's when you get ads and, uh, you know, teasers and trailers for upcoming content product. We used to call them movies and TV shows. Anyway, just the other day we saw uh, little bits and pieces of Avengers Endgame. Looks grim and sad. Captain Marvel looks downright inspirational. Toy Story 4 looks kind of dull, actually. They probably should have just kept it at a trilogy. Uh, but the one thing that did get my attention and piqued my interest was uh, the reboot, or the latest reimagining, of The Twilight Zone, this time under the guidance of one Jordan Peele, you know, from Get Out, and of course the upcoming Us. They dropped a trailer for that as well. Uh, Peele's uh, follow-up movie, which looks downright spooky and scary. Can't wait for that one. Also now can't wait for The Twilight Zone. I mean, I was a bit sceptical about this going in because, I don't know, every, what, 10, 15, 20 years or so, they attempt to reboot The Twilight Zone. And um, look, it's never bad, but uh, I was thinking it might be time for something new. Having said that, Peel seems to be taking a kind of Black Mirror approach, just based on the 30 second tease that we got that showed us absolutely nothing about uh, what he plans to do with it. But Peel himself looks to be taking the Rod Serling role of introducing the stories and ushering into the Twilight Zone. For those of us who know Peel from Key and Peel, this sort of gear shift is unexpected. It's really interesting, and I think he's gonna pull it off actually. So now I was. Pretty stoked about that. Looking forward to The Twilight Zone, apparently coming in April. Uh, I think it's CBS All Access in the States, which probably means we'll get it on Netflix here. Or I, I don't know. There are so many streaming services. Um, just keep your eyes open. It'll be there. And I'll let you know. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped about it, and I'm going to get you hyped about it as you know we get closer to entering the Twilight Zone. Speaking of the Twilight Zone, and I've already spoken far too much about it already, but something that dropped on Netflix last uh, Friday night here in Australia, your mileage may vary depending on what part of the world you're in, was uh, Velvet Bubs... Uh, Velvet Bubs Saw? Let's try that again. Velvet Buzz Saw. Kind of an unwieldy title. I'm not a fan of it, in all honesty. And it sounds me to say, not a fan of this film. It struck me, I was making a very glib observation to a friend on social media saying that this was basically a Twilight Zone or Outer Limits episode crossed with one of those movies in the 90s that sort of took you behind the scenes of like the art scene or independent film or something and showed that it was inhabited by a bunch of posers and people who don't really know what they're doing. <sighs> I wanted a bit more out of Velvet Buzzsaw, I've got to say, because... You know, it's written and directed by Dan Gilroy, uh, the writer-director of a very good film called Nightcrawler and another film called Roman J. Israel Esquire. It's not that bad. I'm taking the piss a little bit. I mean, it's, uh, it's not a great movie. It was a change of pace for, uh, for Denzel after things like The Equalizer, The Magnificent Seven and stuff where he was basically capping fools left and right. Back to Velvet Buzzsaw. Do we really have to talk about it? <laughs> Not that great, unfortunately. Uh, the gist of it is, it's a black comedy slash horror movie set in the modern art scene. Uh, a cache of uh, artworks has been discovered by an artist who turned out to be, I don't know, something of a psycho. Uh, but the art is apparently great, according to all the people on the scene. They're making money out of it left and right, but guess what? They all meet a terrible grisly fate in the end. Um, what's Gilroy trying to do here? I don't know. I think he's trying to, as I said, make a black comedy slash horror movie. Also skewer the pretensions of the art world. Doing this with a variety of sort of larger than life characters. Uh, played by a variety of sort of larger than life actors. I mean, you've got Jake Gyllenhaal in this. 
Jake is a guy, calling him Jake because he and I are buds, uh, renowned for making choices. <laughs> Jake goes all in. And he does that here as well, playing a flamboyant, again, pretentious, um, I, I guess bisexual, pansexual art critic. Um, doing a pretty good job with it. I mean, Jake's never boring. I'll say that about Mr. Gyllenhaal. He's joined by uh, Rene Russo, uh, who was also in Nightcrawler alongside Gyllenhaal. I normally like Rene Russo a lot. Didn't really buy her in this, I've got to say. Not, uh, not her best work. But, uh, you know, you're backing up. You've got a deep bench of really good supporting players. You've got Tony Collette doing a pretty good job. John Malkovich doing his Malkovich thing, which is normally great, but, you know, I get the feeling we're getting 70% Malkovich here. Um, Zoe Ashton, she was fine. Uh, Billy Magnuson's a guy I like a lot. He showed up. Um, met a grisly fate. Sorry for the spoiler, but uh, who else is in there? David Diggs from the original cast of Hamilton. You got good actors across the board in this. Uh, you don't give them a lot to work with, unfortunately. So, yeah, there's plenty of stuff on Netflix. You could probably easily avoid this. I mean, look, there's stuff dropping this coming week. My man Steven Soderbergh, his next film is dropping at the end of the week, uh, a basketball drama called High Flying Bird. Can't wait for that one. Hopefully it'll sort of wash away some of the disappointment of... The movie's title, I, it, it's so forgettable that I almost forgot the title, Velvet Buzzsaw. Now, having said that, if you're in the mood for a movie with Jake Gyllenhaal, a movie that sort of, again, skewers the pretension of the art world, may I recommend Nocturnal Animals? From our man Tom Ford, who um, makes some really nice clothes, also makes some really nice movies. You couldn't actually call Nocturnal Animals nice, it's actually pretty grim, but it's the most beautiful grim movie I don't know, I've seen in some time. You've got Amy Adams, which is, you know, always a sign of quality. Uh, she broke up with Jake Gyllenhaal a while back, and now she's sort of living a charmed life. Semi-charmed life, shall we say. And that's not a reference to the song, by the way. Uh, you know, she's got a husband played by Army Hammer. You'd think that was good. He's cheating on her. That's bad. Um, she is a curator, or she's sort of, you know, part of the L.A. art scene, which, <laughs> as Velvet Buzzsaw shows... Is kind of shallow, pretentious, and, you know, not exactly that artistic. Um, she receives a novel from her ex-partner, Jake Gyllenhaal. It's sort of a... veiled look at their life together, but it's also got some pretty nasty stuff in it. I don't know, it's... Look, it's a very well-made, sleek thriller with... Uh, you know, a a gritty, nasty undertone, and I don't know, Ford and his cast is able to sort of uh, bring it all together quite nicely. Certainly more, uh, in a more accomplished way than Velvet Buzzsaw does. So anyway, if you want to watch Velvet Buzzsaw, I'm not going to stop you, I'm not your real dad, but I would recommend that you uh, maybe give Nocturnal Animals a spin in its stead. Now, this is the first uh, episode of Front Row Centre, and uh, no one's ever accused me of being original, so I'm going to rip off an idea from a podcast that I like. I'm not going to name names because, I don't know, maybe they could sue me. Um, but here's something that's making me happy this week, but, you know, let's not call it what, what's making me happy this week. Instead, let's call it, I don't know, Cheer Squad. Here's something that I received in the mail earlier this week. Black Leopard, Red Wolf, the new book from author Marlon James. Marlon is, uh, well, he's an award-winning, he's the, well, he's the award-winning author of the novel A Brief History of Seven Killings, which is dense and flavorful and a very good read that, in all honesty, I'm still making my way through. So I should probably finish that one before I start this one. But how this, however, is accompanied by uh, plenty of hype, and I'd say justifiably so, given that it is being touted as an African version of Game of Thrones slash Lord of the Rings. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. Um, look, I may make it 20 pages into, into this and say, wow, this is garbage. Somehow I don't think I'm going to do that. And if uh, the words an African version of Game of Thrones slash Lord of the Rings piques your interest, then you might want to check it out as well. This came from our friends at Penguin Random House. Thank you, Penguin Random House, for doing me one right. Appreciate it. That was that for the very first edition uh, chapter, I don't know, episode, 
I don't know. Choose your uh, choose your words carefully, friends. Uh, of front row center. There's room for improvement, I'm sure. There's room for improvement in everything, but certainly in this. So, um, there's a comment section around here somewhere. Feel free to add your two cents. It's going to be mean, I can tell. It's, you know, probably... Why are you holding up a, a, a mug with, with, your, uh, with your initial of your first name on it, guy? Why are you doing that? Maybe don't do that. Well, you know, <laughs> say goodbye to the mug. This will not be in episode two, if there is an episode two. In meantime, I have uh, watched enough YouTube recently to um, know the uh, holy trinity of words. Like, share, subscribe, do them all. Um, in the meantime, that was, and this is, Front Row Centre with your host Guy Davis. Um, we'll be back in the future, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, in the meantime, keep it real.